Today I am going to be doing an acrylic painting demonstration of one of the funnest paintings I've done in a while. For this painting, I wanted to try an idea I had where a ribbon wraps around different wildlife, and I, I have so many more ideas now after doing this one. But my goal was to have just an abstract kind of stone marble looking type of background with teal, and then the dolphins and a ribbon with a sunset scene inside. One of the things that I found on this, because my ribbon is so thin, it was hard to really capture the look of the sunset. So it kind of like unless someone points out to you that it's a sunset I think most people are just going to assume it's an orange ribbon which works with the sort of abstract type feel I was going for so either way I'm happy for this one I wanted to paint on a really smooth canvas because I knew I wanted a lot of detail on the little ribbon and on the dolphins so I chose a Frederick's blue label ultra smooth canvas and anytime you're going to do a lot of detail you do want a canvas or something like this where there's smooth blending you want to go with a canvas that is very smooth my favorites for that and just to be transparent I am sponsored by Frederick's but these were already the only canvas that I use. The Blue Label Ultra Smooth is nice. It's very affordable for how great of a canvas it is. Extremely smooth. Other options that I considered going with that are also smooth would be the Frederick's Belgian Linen Canvas, their Nature Core Mixed Media Canvas Board I really like, or the Watercolor Canvas Board. Those are all really, really smooth canvases. So when you're trying to get a lot of blending, if you are working in acrylics and you're having a hard time getting things to blend and everything looks very rough, it may be the canvas you're using. Some canvases will fight you on getting a smooth finish or fine detail. So make sure you are choosing the right canvas for the type of results that you're you are working towards. And if you are new to acrylic paintings, I do have an intro to acrylics where I go over more in detail all of these things. I'll have a card pop up here so you can check that out. So you may want to do that project first, then come back and paint this one. If you are supporters over on Patreon, I have the one and a half hour version of this tutorial available for you now. So make sure to head over and check that out. If you are unfamiliar with Patreon, every week I upload a new one to two hour long tutorial, or occasionally we do some Patreon only live streams where I walk you through step by step an entire project. You can get all of that plus over 150 of my past Patreon videos for as little as $4 a month. If you're not sure if that's something that you're interested in and you want to check out what videos I have available, I will put a link to my video library that you can look through in the description. Now let's go ahead and move on to this demonstration. To start with, for my background, I have mixed phalo blue, phalo green, and Mars black. I misted my whole canvas with water. I'm going to be using a regular spray bottle, the same, actually it's the same one I use on my plants, to add water to this and it's going to just give you different effects with the paint. Now I am often asked, is it okay to use water with acrylics? There are videos out there telling you why you can't. I'll have a card pop up explaining why it's actually okay with a few exceptions. So make sure to check that out if you are unsure if using this much water is safe. So as I go through here, you can see I misted some water. I'm using a really big paintbrush. I want my brush strokes to show. Now I'm starting to add white to part of this. Now, when you're playing around with paint like this, you can make as many layers as you want and it actually looks better if you do several layers because of the way that the each layer will have light refract through it and you'll get a lot more depth that way than if you just do one layer uh, so if you have something that happens and you're like, oh my gosh, this came out terrible, don't worry about it. Just do another layer. Just keep playing with it until you like how it looks. Now here you can see there is a lot of water. You can see that moving around as this is sped up. Now I take trash bags and put them underneath the work because this does get messy. And then I've got paper towels around the edge. I have to work flat this way. You wouldn't want to do this upright at an easel unless you want things to run a lot. I've sprayed some or splattered some paint on there. Now, when I use the hairdryer, look at the shape that I got when the water evaporated from that. It gave me a lot of texture. Now, as I add more paint on top, which is fairly translucent, this is the Liquitex Basics, it, it mutes that, it tones it down, but I still have this really interesting texture underneath. So we'll go ahead and start adding some more with the white again, flicking some paint on there. And when I do this, I don't have a set plan of this is exactly what it's going to look like. I just make a mess with the paint until I get a background that I think looks pretty cool. And the other thing with this one is I knew I would be glazing color on top of it. So I don't have to have my background absolutely perfect or the absolute perfect color right here. I just need to get texture. So that is the texture I ended up with. This part's going to go really fast because this was done on the live stream. I'll put, I have a card pop up so you can go ahead and check that out. But now we will go ahead and slow this down a bit and move on to these dolphins. So the first thing that I do when I have a background that is this dark is I 
fill in a solid more opaque layer so the with the dolphins just making a gray color with the titanium white and mars black gives me a pretty nice opacity or en enough opacity to cover that background so i don't have a ton of that texture showing through and when i say texture i really just mean the visual texture you can't really feel bumps or anything on that canvas so now once I get the colors about what I want for my base layer, I can go ahead and start adding details over the dolphin. For the rays of light, if you struggle with painting those on there to get that kind of shape where they're rounding off on the dolphin, use a white charcoal pencil. There's one by Generals that I love. That one helps so much because you can draw it on if you realize, oh, I don't like what these rays of light look like. Just erase it and try again. It's easier than doing it with a paint and realizing you don't like it very much. But here I have painted enough so I didn't draw mine on with, with the charcoal pencil. I've done this technique many, many times. So I'm using a liner brush. This is a synthetic hog haired liner brush. And I do have a list of all of the supplies I use over on my website. I'll put a link to that in the video description if you want to see what tools that I like to use. So adding the mouth here and I take a clean dry brush and just smudge the color a little bit. Now in order for that to work, the previous layer needs to be dry. Acrylics do dry fast enough that they're dry within, I mean, seconds dry to the touch, but make sure that it's really, really dry because as I do that, see where I'm smudging right there with a clean dry brush. If the paint underneath is just slightly, slightly wet, it will lift. You'll create almost a hole in that paint. So make sure your previous layer is dry before you take another dry brush like what I'm doing there to smudge paint out but it works really well what I'm doing is basically blending you hear what us talk about or artists talk about blending wet into wet this is blending a wet area into a dry area what's underneath is totally dry so I'll move on to the next dolphin here and I'm taking some darker blues now see how I'm glazing that this is very translucent and I'm glazing this over portions of that dolphin there and in between some of the rays of light that are on his body We'll mix a little bit more white here. So this color is going to be more opaque because I've used an opaque color. So that gives me that nice kind of grayish tone. So that was the phthalo blue, phthalo green, black, and white to get this tone of gray. Now notice how I outline everything before I fill it in. This helps me to keep my outer edges nice and smooth and then I can be pretty messy on the inside filling it in. You do not want messy edges. I can't stress that enough. If you want your work to look nice and clean, get those edges clean. That's a big deal. Here, if I want brushes or if I have brush strokes showing, it's not a big deal, but I don't want fluffy edges on the dolphin or he'll look furry. Now I'm starting to add more blue. And that is that phthalo blue. Got a bit of black mixed into it there. Now this is blending wet into wet, so nothing on this base has dried yet. Now if I really want to get rid of my brush strokes, I can take a mop brush and lightly go over it. You want the mop brush to be clean and dry in order to get rid of some of those brush strokes. You just barely let the bristles touch. But here, I'm going to be putting so many layers on top, it's not even worth the effort because you're not going to notice those anyway. So here, that is the blue with some Mars black. If you've got ivory black, watch that one because that one has a tendency to be very translucent. I like it for certain glazes, but if you want something to be more opaque, go with the Mars black. So here, I've added a little bit of magenta into that blue. See how it has a cooler tone? It's almost purple. Now, I wasn't absolutely certain what this was going to look like once I put the ribbon in, so I didn't want to spend too much time making sure the dolphin colors were just exactly perfect because I knew I would have to go back and change everything. What I'm focusing most on here is just trying to get my values about where I'm going to want them. So right now, see how the dolphins kind of, they, they are almost lost in this background. They're too similar in color. So I will be going through and tinting those a lot with a more cool blue, so that purplish blue. So onto the rays of light of this dolphin. Again, you can do that with the charcoal pencil because the reason I say charcoal pencil and not a regular graphite pencil, first, the graphite, really hard to see on colors like this. Second, a regular graphite pencil, those lines, you can usually see through a lot of the translucent colors. Uh, that always drove me crazy with some of my older paintings where I could always see the graphite lines. One alternative is to use a water-soluble graphite, so you can definitely do that. But the white charcoal pencil is really nice because it erases completely.
going through here again using that liner brush and then I'm smudging it out. Some of this is being done with a mop brush. Some of it is being done with a, just a clean dry, a smaller kind of a stiff brush. You'll just play around with it. I want to get different textures. I don't want each of these lines to be the same thickness. I don't want all of them to be the exact same curve. You want to get variation in there. And I just used white. I didn't worry about getting the perfect color because see here how I can glaze another color over it and that tones them down so they're no longer white. Yes, I could have just mixed that color to start with and not used white at all, but it's much easier to go ahead and do it in white and then glaze on top. It just makes things so much simpler. So if you, you do struggle with, with coming up with perfect colors, learn to glaze. Get used to working and glazing because it's so easy to adjust colors this way. I let that dry and now I'm going back on top of it with some brighter white. The other thing that you should notice here, look how the curve of the rays of light on the dolphin, how that curves around his back. You don't want straight lines. It will make him look very flat. Make sure that those lines, a lot of those are curving right around where his body itself would curve. You want him to look more three-dimensional. And I keep going back and forth between glazing and adding white. And when I do that, I am letting it dry in between layers. So now I'm going to work on the ribbon. I am going to use unbleached titanium white. You could use titanium white. I'm using unbleached just because I know I'm going to make it orange anyway. So this is a very opaque color. It'll completely cover everything up. I drew everything on with a white charcoal pencil. So you can really see there how much that pencil shows up against these darker backgrounds. And I'm painting where the ribbon is going to go. The reason that I can't just jump into painting it orange is that it won't show up. Oranges and reds, yellows, very, very translucent. While there are a few that are opaque, most are very translucent. So what I need to do first is get an opaque light color to go underneath them. And that way when I put the oranges and when I put the reds, they're going to glow. They'll, they'll show up so much. Now, again, same thing like the dolphins. I want to make sure that those edges are nice and smooth, really clean. It'll make your work look so much better than if you have really rough, bumpy edges. Just get those nice, nice, clean edges where they should be smooth. And see how I do this in one brush stroke? I don't want to do a whole lot of little teeny tiny brush strokes where they're all maybe a quarter inch brush strokes. I see a lot of new artists do that. Just tons of little brush strokes. So it's almost like sketching with the paintbrush. If you want a smooth line as much as possible, try to do that in one single fluid brush stroke. See how smooth that looks? And if you are getting really bumpy edges, even though you're doing it in one brush stroke, there can be a couple of causes. One, your paintbrush might just be damaged. Sometimes that happens. If you're using the wrong paintbrush, that's going to make, give you some trouble. If you're using a canvas that has too much tooth, if it's too rough, that's going to be hard to get smooth edges. The other reason, which is probably one of the more common, is that you don't have enough paint or water on your brush. That alone will give you a rougher look where you have to continuously reload that brush. See how it's, again, nice and smooth, and then I can fill it in and be pretty messy once I fill it in. I don't care if brush strokes show here. I'll be putting detail inside. So now I'm painting in, or actually I'm measuring here because I need to get my water line straight. Now, honestly, if I didn't point it out to somebody, most people aren't going to realize. If you see it in person, you can tell. But when you shrink it down on a computer screen, it's kind of hard to tell that's supposed to be a sunset within that that ribbon a beach scene there's the the water surface at the bottom on the left hand side and we've got the back line here of the water well i'll have some palm trees in there my main goal with this painting was based on the color i just wanted this glow of orange i wanted a scene inside that scene but my main goal here was to have this sort of abstract feel and to really play with this exact color palette so here i'm mixing my own orange i'm not using orange paint itself i'm just using red and yellow Filling that in. And I want to be careful around these edges too. They need to stay nice and clean. Just because you've got your first layer really clean doesn't mean you can start being sloppy when you start adding color on top. Now this color is pretty muted. I'll definitely be glazing on top of it to brighten all of this up. Now one of the colors that I'm using for my shadows here, when you're painting with orange, don't automatically jump to black for shadows. Here my shadows are being done with a violet color and that gives me a much nicer color. Whenever I'm painting with orange and yellows too, I will usually try to use purples or violets for my shadows. It will generally give you a nicer look. There are always exceptions, but more often than not, that's a, a good way to go. So we've got the sunset in the sky here. 
I'm using a Taclon bristled filbert brush to get this poofy cloud look in that sky. It's a slightly rounded brush and just by overlapping one brush stroke into the next, it lets me, and letting those brush strokes show, it gives me this look of clouds very easily. Got to make sure when I paint the water lines that those are completely horizontal. Even though my ribbon curves, I don't want to follow the water line. I don't want to let that water line follow that curve. They have to stay horizontal. Now, the water surface where the, the beach meets the, meets the sand, that can have a curve. But for the actual ripples in the water, I want to make sure they're really, really straight. It's very easy if you're painting like a stream or a river coming down towards the viewer. I've seen this a lot where the water curves. The artist has a tendency to want to curve those lines that should be straight. They'll curve them around with the, the movement of or the flow of that river. Don't do that. Any You want to watch that those lines stay horizontal. Otherwise, it looks like your water is leaning. It gives it, I mean, if you're going for a surreal look, then that's a good way to do it. But watch for that. Keep those lines. If they should be horizontal, don't try to follow the water line. Follow the fact that they just should be horizontal. So using a liner brush there, creating some little palm trees. I painted the hills with my violet first and then put some black for the darker shadows. But when I come back to the water, see how I've switched back to violet for the shadows. I don't want to jump straight into black. And this isn't super detailed, that's really far away. So I went ahead and you, the mountains there, see how they just fade into the water? I don't have a definite hard line. I'm gonna go around and outline my ribbon. My ribbon felt weird to me. It was just blending too much into the background. It didn't have enough of that abstracty feel that I was looking for. So I went ahead and outlined everything with black. It really made that stand forward or push, pushed it forward. Grammar. Not my forte. So now that the, the ribbon is in there, I can see those dolphins are just, they're being lost in this scene. So I need to pull them forward. And the best way for me to do this, my background is a very warm blue. So I'm going to make my dolphins a very cool blue. Adding this purple makes it much, much easier to get the color that I'm going for. Or it gives me that difference. It gives me contrast between the background and the dolphins. So it separates them better. Now, one of the things that I'm going to do on this background, and obviously the timing is really off on my palette to the painting. There we go. I mixed some phalo blue and phalo green, and I'm using my Liquitex glazing medium. Now, for the rest of this painting, I'm just using water for glazing. But for this background, in order to get a really good glow, if you want your glazes to just, the light just refracts through it so beautifully to where it really looks like it's glowing, use the Liquitex glazing medium. I love this stuff for that. And unfortunately, in the, the video, you just can't see, even the finished painting, this is one of those that doesn't look anywhere near as good in video or in the photograph as it does in person because of the way that the light bounces around each of the layers that I have on this canvas. It's got so much more depth in person. I wish that I was able to really capture this, but unfortunately, it's just not, it's not the same as seen in person. So now I'm going to go ahead and continue to work on some of these rays of light. Now, you're probably going to have a really hard time finding a good photo of a dolphin or whales that have rays of light the way that you like them, So, or if you like this look. So what I've done is to, I will find reference photos that I have rights to, whether it be graphic stock or Pixabay or wherever I have rights to use those photos. And then I will take, I'll look at other artists who have painted amazing light on their dolphins. Christian Lassen has been a huge inspiration for me. Look at other artists how they're making those rays of light look. So I'm not copying his work, but I am being inspired by the way that he does the light on his dolphins. So I'm getting my own reference photos. There's no violation of copyright there, but that for me was the best way to find, because you, like I said, you can't find a good photo that you want to copy exactly. You can find tons, just thousands of tigers or flamingos or other animals, but getting the good underwater scenes of dolphins and whales, that is really hard to find. And the the photographers that take those don't generally let us artists use them. So that's what I have done. I've looked, I go and find a photo that's decent. I mean, I can see the outline of the dolphin, even if it's not a great photo, but then I will use the techniques that other artists that I really admire use on their dolphins to get the rays of light to look like this. I think it's important to understand the difference between completely copying an artist 
and being inspired by and learning from them. And that's what this case is, is just learning from, from that. So if you've got photos of dolphins, you are more than welcome to use my techniques on a different a different dolphin, a different painting, and that you still have copyright to that. That's not a violation of copyright to learn from my techniques and use those the, the techniques themselves in your work. And when I do these rays of light, I really want to get variation in there. I do not want all of them to be the same thick thickness or thinness or use different brushes. Sometimes I'm using a round, sometimes I'm using a liner brush, but variation is a really big deal in making that look realistic and doing this in layers. I add a layer, I glaze over it, I add another layer, and I don't just take from one layer to the next. Those lines aren't just being traced on top of the previous line. They're next to it. They're overlapping it. They're in another location, but the way that I'm glazing over that, it really looks like light is bouncing around on that dolphin because you get that variation with the way that it's being layered. Making sure that background is dry before I do anything else. Some just little touch-ups here and there. See how I'm coming back through in between some of these rays of light. And look how it pushes them forward. Adding a little bit of shadowing with my dark blue. So there's some black and blue mixed together. And it makes those, the lines for the reflections of light there, look how it makes those stand out. Just really watch your contrast on your paintings. You can use just about any color you want on something because that's something that a lot of people get worked up about. They, they're they worried they can't make something look right because they don't know what colors to use. The colors are not that big of a deal. The contrast will make it look realistic. Get the contrast, dark darks, light lights. If you can really play that up, that will make your work look much, much more realistic, even if your colors are not what you actually wanted. Throw in a few bubbles in here. I do have a video showing you how to paint bubbles just like this. I'll have a card pop up if you want to check that out. That's a much slower tutorial for that one. I think that was actually one of my first or my very first voiceover tutorial. It's an older one. More glazing, more layering. I just keep going over it and adding more and more and more. And doing that, it just adds so much more depth to the piece than if I just left it one layer straight through. I mean, I can have the rays of light look good and look correct on the first layer, but it won't have the same depth as creating multiple lines, multiple colors. And you can see I've got violet in there, I've got blues, I've got a lot of other colors in those rays of light as well. So there is the finished painting. Whenever you are working on something, again, watch your contrast. Get your darks dark enough, your lights light enough. That is going to make such a difference in your work. And it is a scary thing to do. It is really scary. Usually people are afraid to make things dark enough. But if you can just be brave, go ahead and try it. You will see such a difference in your work. Plus, what's the worst that's going to happen? If you paint a bad layer and you don't like it, just paint over it. It doesn't mean you ruined anything. It just means you're not done with the painting yet. You know what's funny? This was one of my favorite paintings that I've done in a while. Like, I loved how it came out. Especially, I think it's different, too, when you see it in person because of the glow, the colors, just the way that, the, like I said before, the lights refracting through. But it was funny because I had a couple of people on Instagram that were, like, really vocal about how much they disliked it. One person called it disturbing. Disturbing? I, mean, do you, and I don't know if you know what that word means. You can not like something, but disturbing? Really? What? Who says that to an artist who is clearly happy with the work that they created? Seriously, some people just have no manners. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, YouTube probably won't notify you when anybody has videos anymore. They're really bad about notifying people. But sometimes they do, so you should hit that button anyway. You can also sign up for my email newsletter, which I send out once a week, with, and that will give you updates on whatever videos went out that week, some art motivation, and other updates. And that I have control of, so I can be sure it goes out every week.